Well, you know, the Tea Parties are set to go international now. In less than 24 hours, my next guest will be hosting the first Tea Party in England. Protesting out of control taxation, you know him quite well. You cannot carry on forever squeezing the productive bit of the economy in order to fund an unprecedented engorgement of the unproductive bit. You cannot spend your way out of recession or borrow your way out of debt. And when you repeat in that wooden and perfunctory way that our situation is better than others, that we're well placed to weather the storm, I have to tell you, you sound like a Brezhnev era apparatchik giving the party line. You know, and we know, and you know that we know that it's nonsense. Man, I always say he did that without a teleprompter, off the cuff. Why can't our leaders talk like that? Anyway, member of the European Parliament, Daniel Hunnan, joins me now from London. Daniel, very good to have you. Hi, Neil. Nice to be back. Um, a tea party there. Well, since, since we started tea parties protesting you guys, I guess it's good you returned the favor. So where does this stand? Yeah, well, we've got a bigger problem than you. Uh, our debt is higher. Our taxes are rising faster. Uh, this government has raised an additional trillion, an additional trillion, over and above what we would have raised in taxation uh, if taxes have stayed at the previous level since they got in in 1997. So we've got a great deal to protest about, but as you say, I mean, this is England and not the US, so we're, we're going to be drinking tea at our tea party tomorrow rather than dumping it <laughs> in the English Channel. But how much does it register in, in, in your country versus our country where it's become a huge populist movement, much bigger than that? I trivialize it just saying that. Uh, but it, in, in your country and among those who, who are leading these rallies, uh, well, how would you explain the difference? Well, you know, this is right at the beginning. I mean, this is the first interview I've given about it. Um, and the, the, our inaugural meeting is going to be tomorrow. But I was speaking to some of your Tea Party patriot people uh, a few moments ago, and they told me that the thing began with a conference call of 22 people, and it had then grown into 1.2 million. Now, I mean, I'm hoping to have more than 22 people there tomorrow, but it won't be anything like 1.2 million. You know, the, the argument is the same there, Neil. It's the same in Britain, the same in America, the same everywhere. You know, people want to keep more of their money. The way that we're going to get out of this mess, this, this debt crisis that the world is suffering from, is not by taxing more, it's by spending less. So, Gordon Brown in the, in the polls seems to be in a great deal of trouble and, and that he might not be long for that office. Uh, would a more conservative government heed, heed these calls, or are, are you even more conservative than they? In other words, would, would you be calling for something that goes just across party lines to aggressive uh, spending cuts uh, uh, and, and tax cutting? Sure. I mean, I, I, there is definitely going to be an immediate and tangible improvement of our fiscal situation following the election of a Conservative government. I, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And in fact, the, the, the hope of that is what's kept Britain from becoming Greece. It's what's, it's what's pacified the markets, because they, they can read the opinion polls and they can see that we're likely to take over. There's a debate about how much you cut taxes and how much you concentrate on closing the deficit. Now, my favorite recent US president is Ronald Reagan. And I remember a brilliant uh, moment when he was asked whether it was right to keep cutting taxes when the deficit was growing. And he gave that wonderful smile and he said, I'm not worried about the deficit. The deficit's big enough to look after itself. And what he meant by that is, if he cut taxes, he would stimulate growth, there would be a higher receipt of, uh, of revenue from income, and sure enough, the, re the, the deficit did look after itself because more money came in. In my country, Margaret Thatcher at the same time was doing something similar. So we, we mustn't fall into this trap of thinking that the only way to reduce the government's debt is by raising taxes. The best possible stimulus for an economy is a tax cut. All right, we don't have a lot of time, Daniel, but there's a move in Europe now to do something to help out Greece. They're protesting in Greece, some of the cutbacks that are being urged, the unions there. Uh, very much opposed to anything. What should be done? Just uh, others in Germany have been saying, let them, let them rot. We're not, we're not helping them. What, what, what do you think? Well, what should be done is Greece should return to the drachma, the oldest currency in the world, and it would then be able to have that short-term devaluation that would give it breathing space to restructure its uh, its finances. It would be pricing itself into the market. I mean, right. the, the easy way of looking at this, Neil, is this. The Greek deficit is about the same as the British deficit. 
Ours is 12.6% of GDP, theirs is 12.7% of GDP. All right. Why is Britain not in the mess that Greece is in? Because, thank heaven, we kept the pound. And that meant that Good we point. suffered the, the shock of the, 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 the debt in our exchange rate instead of suffering Good it. Point.